Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And hello everyone. So, today my friends and I will presenting about accounting for a zakat of Islamic financial institution. So, before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Aikabi Amran, 18BB05032. So, without wasting your time, let's get started. So, this is the content of presentation today. So, basically, for this presentation, it's more like the revision. Because everything that we will talk today, uh, everything that we have learned before. So the first one is the definition of zakat, evidence from Quran and Hadith, condition of zakat, benefits of zakat, issues of zakat in Malaysia, and lastly the conclusion. So let's move on to the next slide. So this is the definition of zakat. Zakat is an Islamic finance term referring to the obligation that an individual has to donate a certain proportion of wealth each year to the charitable curses. So the first point said Zakat is an obligation so everyone must pay the Zakat. So donate a certain proportion as we know Zakat has its percentage so this percentage we will take from our wealth and pay the Zakat that's the meaning of the first point. The second point is, it is a mandatory process from the same and is regarded as a form of worship. Giving away money to the poor is said to purify yearly earnings that are over and above what is required to provide the essential needs of the person or family. So the second point said, when we give our zakat, it's like we purify our wealth. So this amount of zakat will be used to provide our institution need who people in need so that's the meaning of the second point so the next slide is about evidence from Al-Quran so Allah SWT say in Al-Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 110 establish prayer and pay up tax whatever good is sent for for yourself you will certainly find its reward with Allah surely Allah is all seeing of what you do so in this verse, we can see how important the, the zakat because after Allah said about prayer, he, uh, Allah SWT also said about zakat. So this shows that how the zakat is so important to our Muslim community. So the next one is evident from hadith. So the hadith is too long. So I just take the main point so we can cut our time. This hadith is from Sahih Al Bukhari. We uh, take a look for the the highlighted one, the black one. Then teach them that Allah has made it obligatory for them to pay the zakat and their property, and it is to be taken from the wealthy among them and given to the poor. So basically, in this hadith, uh, I just conclude it. When our Prophet Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Mu'az to Yaman, one of the one of the thing that he want Mu'az to teach people in Yaman is about zakat. So this is shows that this zakat is so important for Muslim, especially for our country, to help people who in need. It. So the next hadith is about what will happen to people who not pay the zakat? So I will read the hadith because uh, I want it to be a reminder for us. If we will, if we not pay the zakat, what will happen to us? So narrated Abu Hurairah, Allah Messenger, Prophet Muhammad SAW said, Whoever is made worthy by Allah and does not pay zakat of his wealth, then on the day of resurrection, his wealth will made by will will be made like a bald-headed poisonous male snake with two black spots over the eye. The snake will encircle his neck and bite his cheek, and then he will say, "I am your wealth, I am your treasure." Then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recite the holy verses 
let not those who withhold to the end of the verse. So, you can imagine what will happen to us if we do not pay the zakat. So, I hope each one of you check whether you pay the zakat or not. So, the next one, we add a little bit of history of zakat. Zakat was made compulsory in the second year of Hijra. So, in Malaysia, administration of zakat is controlled by the state Islamic Religion Council, SIRCS, where the main purpose of establishment is to centralize all the Islamic re religious activity at state level. So, a total of 14 SIRCS of Malaysia, where 13 of it is belong to the state, and one for the Federal ter Territory of Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya, and Labuan. So, Zakat Management Office of each state has various names such as Zakat Ibatuma Office, the Zakat Committee, and the Zakat Department. So, Zakat Collection and Distribution is one of the main function of this council. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Hafizuddin bin Nabis Khan. So, I'm going to be explaining about conditions of Zakat. There are six conditions of zakat. The first condition is Islam. So zakat, of course, it is uh, it is an obligation that has been applied on every free Muslim, including male, female, sane people or insane people, and also including children or adult. Next condition is full ownership or al milk al tam which means owning both the title of the wealth and also the benefit of the wealth. So, uh, full ownership means uh, a person don't have any restriction within the, within on the particular asset, either on lawful restriction or unlawful restriction by any party. So, the person must have 100% ownership or power to own the asset. The third is reaching nisab or threshold. So nisab is known as a threshold determined by zakat institution based on gold value. So the gold value that was put was 85 grams and while the nisab for silver is 595 grams. Next condition is the passage of a year, al-hawl. Since zakat is a yearly obligation, so when let's let's say as, uh, as an example, today is first of January. So until the next year of first January, that is the duration that we need to complete to be obligated to pay an amount of zakat. Next is free people. Okay, so uh, this was the condition we can relate uh, in the era of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam back then when let's say Bilal bin Rabah he was a slave so he was freed later so when he was a slave let's say he was a Muslim so he don't need to pay the zakat because he was a slave so uh, but nowadays we don't have the slavery system so basically we can say that all Muslims which are free is obligated to pay zakat and then lastly is growth assets or al nama the component of growth assets include uh, mostly on the current assets such as cash bonds unit trust so the asset that we own must have the potential to grow in the future let's say we uh, we take as an example bond security so we are confident to put our money into that bond with expectation that the bond price will increase in the future so that means the growth of the assets okay next is benefits of zakat benefits of zakat includes benefits to zakat payers zakat recipients and also for the society in general so i am going to explain to the society first because it, uh, it links the relationship between the payers and the recipients Okay, so the first it promotes social harmony it bridges the gap between them the poor and the rich or the needy and the payer of the zakat so it doesn't bring them far away their income is shared among each other 
The second is benefit for zakat recipients. It promotes employment. As an example, in state of Selangor, there is Majlis Agama Islam Selangor that provides mini lorry for zakat uh, recipients that wanting or willing to start a business. So they are provided a mini lorry for them so they can travel around and sell foods, toys or other things. And it reduces unemployment rate in Malaysia, of course. Third is benefits for zakat payers. So, as an individual, when we pay zakat, we know that we are bringing ourselves closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because we are fulfilling the lessons or the studies that was uh, taught to us by by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, uh, lastly, it purifies our wealth. So we can make sure that the wealth that we receive from wages or salary are purified because we don't want any shubhah part in our financial or income. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to my favorite lecturer, uh, Puan Nur Suryana Awaluddin uh, and to all my fellow friends. Uh, my name is Nur Amaluddin bin Nur Azman but you can just call me Amal. Okay, today I will be talking about the issue that the rise in zakat. It is possible for a person to give zakat to those in need in this era of COVID-19 pandemic without going through the zakat center. The reviewer is Prof. Dr. Yusuf Al Karadawi. So we go to the first point, the hukum. Zakat is obligatory. Zakat is not the charity that we used to do. There is an opinion of jurist that requires zakat to be done on its own. But we Muslim and this country have its fatwa and mufti. So you have to abide by what the fatwa and the mufti in this country for good of ummah. In Al-Quran have stipulated that distribution of zakat must be channeled through amil zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned amil zakat in surah At-Tawbah verse 60. And the role of the government in matter of zakat is mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah verse 103 and Al-Hajj verse 51. In the book of zakat law, Prof. Dr. Yusuf Al-Karadawi stated it is obligatory for the government to send officer Amin to collect zakat because the time of Prophet Muhammad SAW and the Caliph after him also did the same thing. So the next slide is distribution of zakat. Self-distribution method have two points. The first point is self-distribution must be done uh, at the same as procedure as train amil. And the second point is instead of doing self-distribution of zakat, make it as charity. So the first point is self-distribution must be done the same procedure as the amil as the train amil. So the explanation is in the famous book of Shafi'i school namely Fih al-Man Haji al-Shafi'i, the distribution of zakat in private must be done with the same procedure as to how the train amil zakat does it. Because if there is an error in channeling zakat, the zakat become invalid and the owner of the debt is considered still in debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is considered a sin for ignoring the instruction of Ulil Amri, the government. To hand over the zakat to amil zakat while obeying the government is obligatory. So with this, the best way is that we need to channel the zakat fund to the certified amil at the zakat center. So the second point is instead of doing self-distribution of zakat, make it as charity and give a charity according to your ability because the charity has two reward first reward is for charity and the second reward of blessing if they are still stubborn to channel themselves even without amil zakat the effect of the collection will decrease then aid to them will be cut off and this will affect and burden the state in general the bonus point if you see the poor people and the best thing to do is to ask them to make an application at the existing zakat center. This is highly recommended and following the sunnah of the prophet. In conclusion, if you want to help people who are in need, you can buy channeling zakat to the amil or the existing zakat center. Or instead of zakat, you can give the charity according to your ability. That's all for me. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, now we are know who are eligible to receive the zakat. Let's go to the first issue. The first issue is the distribution of zakat to the old men, single mother and orphans. In Al-Quran, they are not mentioned this group to receive the zakat. No way in the Quran said that 
inna masraka tulil ajuzu wa janda wa yatino that's not exist and we already know that eight group of asnaf this group all men single mother and orphan didn't included in this asnaf so why in malaysia many from this group receive the zakat uh, actually we need to know a two reason for this group Uh, to receive the zakat because they are usually under category of fakir and poor not because they are all men for example because not all men is poor there are some of them who are rich there are other issue about the person who are not entitled to receive the zakat but get the zakat that person may do some cheated method to receive the zakat Okay, as we know that zakat as their own calculation, kifayah limit, in determining either someone is eligible to receive zakat or not. But we need to know that zakat is not perfect. It, uh, zakat cannot monitor uh, detail everyone in Malaysia. So, some mistake can happen. So, back to the topic. Is it okay for that uh, person who are not entitled to receive the zakat, consume the zakat? There are hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. Prophet Muhammad SAW once reminded this to Kabishah bin Muhari al-Khilali. That is haram to consume zakat property by those who are not entitled. Haram means sinful. Okay, now we are know who are eligible to receive the zakat. Let's go to the first issue. The first issue is the distribution of zakat to the old men, single mother and orphans. In Al-Quran, they are not mentioned this group to receive the zakat. No way in the Quran said that inna masyarakat tulil ajuzu wa janda wa yatino. That's not exist. And we already know that eight group of asnaf. This group, all men, single mother and orphan, didn't include in this asnaf. So why in Malaysia, many from this group receive the zakat? Uh, actually, we need to know a two reason for this group uh, to receive the zakat because they are usually under category of fakir and poor, not because they are all men, for example, because not all men is poor. There are some of them who are rich. There are other issue about the person who are not entitled to receive the zakat but get the zakat. That person may do some cheated method to receive the zakat. Okay, as we know that zakat as their own calculation, kifayah limit, in determining either someone is eligible to receive zakat or not. But we need to know that zakat is not perfect. It, uh, zakat cannot monitor uh, detail everyone in Malaysia. So, some mistake can happen. So, back to the topic. Is it okay for that uh, person who are not entitled to receive the zakat, consume the zakat? There are hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. Prophet Muhammad SAW once reminded this to Kabishah bin Muhari al-Khilali. That is haram to consume zakat property by those who are not entitled. Haram means sinful. Okay, the next issue is about the distribution of zakat for Fisabilah. Fisabilah means the way of Allah. In the past, many scholars interpreted Fisabilah as a war to uphold Islam. To defend Islam, but now they what not gonna happen. So, who are eligible to receive the zakat under category of fisabilillah? Uh, okay, now today the meaning of it has been interpreted to become more wider, to draw closer to Allah, to give maslaha or benefit that can increase the value of Islam. I will give you some example the way that uh, zakat can be given. Or distribute under category of fisabilillah. Okay, so zakat can be used to build a mosque or surau. The cost of maintaining of mosque can also be covered by the zakat. Zakat also can be used to finding the Islamic institution like tafis and, and finding the student who uh, study the subject that related to the Islam or the subject that can give benefit to Islam, for example, study in medicine, law, Islamic banking. Even the student who are from the family have have who are rich, 
also entitled have a right to receive the zakat because they are under category of fees abdillah but of course zakat will give priority to the student who are poor so that's all for me thank you so as a conclusion zakat is a mandatory practice of islam and the purpose of it is to help society by giving zakat a muslim acknowledge that everything in this world is belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should use it to remember Allah and help those who are in need. Therefore, every Muslim must ensure that zakat is paid to the most deserving people. Hopefully, with zakat, it will, it will be able to help those in need to meet their daily needs and give the unfortunate ones a better life. So, thank you for joining us joining us for our presentation today. I hope you enjoy our presentation and may Allah is everything for us. Goodbye. See ya.